stepped out into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship
Let the poor men say I am rich in him Let the lost men say I am found in him Whoa. And let the river flow Let the blind men say I can see again Let the dead man say I am born again Every one of you, uh, Ron, as always, it's good to see you and your family here. Uh, it's good to have uh, David's mother with us here today. God bless you. Hope you 
make yourself at home and enjoy yourself. It's good to have each and every one of you here. I want to uh, take time to thank you for the uh, first Sunday offering. God bless you richly as you have given. Uh, I want us to be praying for our vacation Bible school. Amen. Uh, we have sent some flyers out here to the uh, Christian Acres apartment areas and down here in this trailer park. And uh, if you have children or grandchildren, uh, encourage them to be here. It's going to be a, a great time. I also want to thank God for protecting my wife. I don't know how many saw her arm today. Uh, we got done remodeling in our house and trying to hang up picture frames and different things. And uh, she went to step on a chair to help hang up a picture. And we had some kitchen rugs sitting on the top of the chair. And I went to say, there's rugs there. But she had put her one foot on it and she went to go up. The rugs went one way and she went another way. And I just reached out with both hands and got her arm because she was going to fall on her side, and I pulled her, and she fell on her back. Got a goose egg about that big on the back of her head. And uh, my daughter has threatened to get a uh, hospital bed to put in her house for mom and uh, turn me into APS, as social services. But uh, I really think if I hadn't have grabbed her arm, that she would have fell on her side, and it could have been a lot worse. And that's the side that's been giving her trouble that I grabbed. And she said, honey... It's not hurting anymore. So she may be like that little girl that fell out of the tree and got healed. Uh, I said that or her body is hurting so much that doesn't hurt near as much. So, but uh, her muscles are quite sore. So continue to uh, remember her in prayer in a very, very special way. God is good and is good all the time, isn't he? Uh, I want to tell you just a little story before Michael puts the uh, title of the message on. Uh, a church got a new pastor, and on the first Sunday he was there, he preached John 3.16. And the second Sunday he preached John 3.16. And the third Sunday he preached John 3.16. And the board got together and said, you know, we enjoy you and your preaching, but uh, the last three sermons have been all John 3.16. He said, yes. And as soon as you do John 3.16, I move on to something else. Uh, I'm not preaching John 3.16, uh, but I'm going to be using a couple of scriptures that I just can't seem to get away from. And uh, Hank, I, I think the Lord's trying to tell us something. God has known in advance who was going to be here. This is a holiday uh, weekend. Uh, some people are out of town. Some people are just home. But we're here, and I want God to bless in a special way. I'd like to have a prayer. Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne, Lord, you know what you've laid upon our heart. We ask you, Lord, to give us the ability to bring forth the word in spirit and in truth. You know the need of every person gathered together here right now. And Lord, we pray in this day and time that we would learn to be your hand extended. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Title of my message this morning, uh, if you'll put it up there, Michael, uh, can't do it or can't do it. Sort of a play on words. Can't do it. Have you ever said I can't do it? Well, maybe you just need to learn to be a conduit. You can't do it, but he can. God needs somebody to work through. A conduit is someone that is used as a way of sending something from one person to another. There's a lot of people in this world that are hurting. And God needs some conduits. I have prayed many times, Lord, help me to be your hand extended. Uh, that is a uh, prayer of commitment because he may put us to the test. Uh, and I want to give this example just briefly. Uh, I love being in a position where I can obtain something to bless others. 
Do you? The Bible says it's more blessed to give than receive. And every time that God is selecting me to be a conduit, I'm trusting people get blessed on this side, but I know I've been blessed. Amen? And you can get blessed in the craziest places. There's been times I've been at yard sales and we saw some nice little toys for kids and I start to pick them up and they say, well, what are you getting that for? I said, well, when children learn scriptures, you know, we've got a treasure chest they can just pick and, and Sister Betty more than once, they've either given it to me or is so reasonable it's not funny. And it can be the same way with purchasing stuff and, and giving it to various people. And I know that God loves me I know that God loves you, but he needs to know that we love him. Amen? Over in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verses 12 and the first part of 13, this is one of the scriptures I just can't seem to get away from. She said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake. You know what she took? I can't do it. Attitude. But a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise, and behold... I'm gathering two sticks I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. That not, that's not much of a future, is it? And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. God has never asked me to do something that by his grace he does not empower me to do it. Amen? When all of a sudden we say we can't do it, I think we need to look at what is preventing us? Why do, we, why do we feel that way? Moses was called of God to lead the people of Israel. And he began to make an excuse. He said, I'm not eloquent of speech. They didn't stop God. He still wanted Moses. And I, I'm sort of paraphrasing here, but he sort of said, well, if you're going to use that for an excuse, take your brother Aaron with you. Okay? How many times have we thrown up a, a road barrier to God using us? The Bible plainly says to quench not the spirit. Sometimes we misinterpret that verse. Uh, if we're in a service and God is moving in a special way, uh, it, it's good to feel that move of the spirit and the power of God. There are some times when we're outside of the church building, the spirit moves upon us. Uh, James shared something with me this morning, and I'm sure he wouldn't mind me sharing it. He didn't tell me, so I tell you, but it just sort of fit in with my message. He said, uh, I normally pack a lunch and take leftovers, and Friday he said, I, we didn't have any leftovers to pack. So I just went, and he's, I decided to get some uh, chicken snacks somewhere. As I'm standing in line, he said, what I got was four ninety eight. He said, it wasn't a bad price. Dad, when it came time for me to order, something hit me and I looked off to the side and in the parking lot, there was a man digging through the garbage, probably trying to find something to eat. And James looked at the person and says, double that, I want two of them. And Sister Ella, he said, I took it out there and told the man, he said, uh, here, have a blessed day. See, when you become a conduit where God can work through you, there's another person in this congregation, I won't go all, all the details, it was a lot more than 498. But you know what? God moved. And he blessed. Sometimes we worry, what will this cost me? But you know what? If you're in a conduit state and God's in it, he'll supply what it took to replace what you gave. That's the kind of God that I serve. See, Elijah was told, it says, fear not. And if you know the rest of the story, and I've told it about three times here recently, there was enough meal left over that she and her son, who were going to eat their last meal, lay down and die, not only ate until God sent rain upon the earth, also her house. The original meal, she didn't plan for her house. It was just for her and her son. And we, we sometimes think, you know, God can't meet and supply my needs. But the Bible doesn't lie. 
According to his riches and glory is how he's going to meet and supply our needs. And what is his riches? Streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. Wow, what collateral. So when you feel down and out and the devil's trying to beat you down, uh, God may use one of us to be a conduit to you, or God may use one of you to be a conduit to me. Let's go into First Chronicles now. Give me now wisdom. This is Solomon's prayer and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge that thy people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, because that was in thine heart. I underlined it. You know, our trouble sometimes, we know God here. But you need to know him here. Because when you got him here, you got him. Because then you can be moved by the spirit and the power of God. You know what the span of measurement is? 18 inches? You know it's about your span of your fingertip to your elbow from the top of your head to your heart. Uh, no one did it yet, but I'll guarantee you before the today's out, you'll do it. You'll probably wait until nobody's watching and you go like this. Well, yeah, it is right there in my heart. Well, it's just one of those things. It's sort of like wet paint. Don't touch it, son. Uh, it, I want you to all be honest. Next Sunday when you see me, I want you to tell me how many of you did that. It's, it, it, go, it needs to go from here to here. And when it goes from here to here, you'll become a conduit and not a can't do it. You'll see what God is able to do. And thou hast not asked for riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies. Neither yet hast thou asked, or uh, asked for, uh, it's supposed to be long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Can you imagine? It's almost like, you know, to relate it to a fairy tale, you got, you got a wish. Whatever you wish for is going to be granted. You didn't ask for the life of your enemy. You didn't ask for long life. You didn't ask for wealth, honor, fame, all these things. But he wanted knowledge so he may be a conduit to God's people. Next slide, please. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. You got it. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have ever had been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. And in brackets I put, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If we're not careful, the reason why we say we can't do it, we fear there's not enough to go around. God wants to bless every single one of us here today. Some of your prayers for your children, your grandchildren, uh, your jobs, any number of things, you know that God can meet and supply every prayer. Every prayer. It's not first come, first serve. Every single one of us. But we're going to have to get into a line, a spiritual line, a conduit where he can flow to us. I heard a message preached a long, long time ago, and we, uh, the guy who was preaching talked about having a vessel. And it had a spout that you could turn on. And he said, as you turn it on and it blesses others, don't worry about your vessel running out because he'll pour in as you give. Now that can also mean finances. Prove me now herewith if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you can't begin to contain. Uh, you can talk to my clerk back there. I went through a stretch uh, of time, and we talked about it, and I said, the more I gave, the more I got. It was like I couldn't outgive God. And it was just phenomenal. But see, I didn't give just to get. God laid it upon my heart. Now see, sometimes if we're not careful, we try to say, well, if I do that, am I going to have enough for this? And that can be your time, just not finances. But if God's voice is in it and he's moving you, he will make a way possible. He doesn't mean that some be burdened, others be eased. But he does need vessels in which to work through. 
the next verse is a double slide. And it, it says in Galatians 2 and 20, Paul writing here, he says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth where? In me. That's the conduit. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And then he said in Philippians 1 and 21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Can people look at us, and we have such a conduit with the Spirit of God, they say, there goes a man of God. There goes a woman of God. There goes someone who's rooted and grounded and, and got their feet in the, in the kingdom of God. The outside world's looking. In fact, the Bible in one place says that the creature is waiting for the manifestation of the spirits of the sons of God. People are looking. They're wanting to see. When Jesus went around, the Bible says that he healed, healed them all. If you're crucified with Christ and you live because he's in you, then I don't think we need to walk around all depressed. Our cup needs to be full and running over. Amen? And the surplus, the stuff that's left over, should be getting on people and being blessed in a special way. I've told this story before, but my grandpa Minnick, my mom's dad, uh, we were in a three-generational house for a long, long time. And when Grandpa would fill up his coffee cup, they had a saucer, he on purpose would overflow it. And after he drank his cup of coffee, he'd pick up the saucer, Sister Gal, and he just wouldn't drink it, he'd slurp it. But to him, that was the best part of that coffee. I've said this before, if you ever got McDonald's french fries, you know what the best fry in the world is? The one that's down in the bag. After you finish that little box, you search that bag and you say, oh, all right, there's one or two more there. And those are the best fries that McDonald's has. Why? Because you thought it was all said and done, but there were still more. Have you ever thought that God couldn't bless you any more than what he has? And here it is. What's, what's your heart's desire? You know, uh, here quite some time ago, we uh, remodeled our, our kitchen. And to this day, my wife will walk into that kitchen, Brother Hank, and say, Oh, thank you, Lord, for this kitchen. She's, she's grateful. Well, we just got her bathroom and our living room done. And I told her, I said, Honey, I don't want you sitting down in the living room all night long saying, Thank you, Lord. Every so often you have to come up here and go to bed. You know? But God's a good God. And when you thank him for what he has done, you know what you're doing? You're getting the conduit ready. He's going to say, you think that's something? Wait. Has God ever blessed you abundantly, above and beyond what you can ever think or hope? There's great things out there. I'm longing. You know, sometimes we pray, Sister Gal, for certain things. But you know, I, I, when God answers prayer, it's more than the reuniting and salvation. There may be great works involved that we could not even imagine would happen. That's how God is. He changes people. I saw a marquee the other day. Uh, uh, we are not supposed to change the message. The message is supposed to change us. Amen? That word that is a two-edged sword, it'll cut going in, it'll cut going out. It, it'll cause us, by his grace, to be what we're supposed to be. In John, the 14th chapter, and there are several verses here from 9 through 17, I believe it is. It says, he, Jesus speaking here, he that has seen me has seen the Father. See, that's the conduit. You, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? If he's talking to Philip. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Jesus, after speaking to the woman at the well of Samaria, she went out and blessed people. But when it first happened, his disciples, he sent them off to get meat. He sat down because he was tired. 
Isn't it something? The Bible says, Be ye not weary in well-doing, for in due season ye shall reap, if you faint not. Jesus was just physically tired, and he was hungry. He sent his disciples off. But you know what happened? He was a conduit. And when the woman of the well of Samaria came, he preached to her. He talked to her. And God moved. And Brother Jerry, when his disciples came back with meat, they saw him refreshed. And they probably thought in their mind, well, somebody must have fed Jesus. You know what his answer was? I have meat to eat that you know not of. When God uses you as a conduit, I'm here to tell you, you will find strength that you thought you could never find. You'll start to have a vision that will be renewed, and God will bless you in a special way. The next slide, starting at verse 12, says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And it doesn't stop there. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye ask in my name, this will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything, what's the limitations? Anything. Do you realize what that means? Anything in my name, I will do it. But here's the qualifier. If you love me, Keep my commandments. It's not a name it, claim it. It's not a blab it, grab it. It is asking in God's will. And that conduit will meet and supply everything if, if you love me and keep my commandments. Old houses that were built that had the lead pipes, you know what happened to the flow of water over time? Corrosion sets in there. Okay? Okay. And the, it restricts the flow of water. Sometimes our iniquities will restrict good things that God wants to give to us. Our disobedience or what have you. Uh, you ever get a garden hose and you're spraying something? And all of a sudden you, you flip it, you know, to get more. And if it flips over and kinks, you know what happens to your water pressure? It's gone. And what you do is I look back and see what the problem is. And I can stand back and say, I can't believe that hose is can't just stand there and complain and complain and complain. No, I need to go back and correct the situation. Amen? I wonder how many times in our life we know exactly where the problem lies. But we expect him to do it. He didn't do it. He didn't put Lazarus in the tomb. He didn't roll the stone in place. All he did was speak Lazarus to come forth. Then he commanded the stone to be rolled away. Then he commanded for the grave clothes to be removed and the napkin off his eyes. He didn't put any of those things on Lazarus, but he spoke. He's speaking life to us today, but there are some things that we have to do by keeping his commandments to shed things so that God can bless. The next slide goes on to say, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye shall know him, for he dwelleth where? With you, and shall be in you. This is the conduit that God works through. See, Jesus said his words that he speaks are not mine, they're the Father's. And you know the Holy Ghost? won't speak anything except what he's told. Boy, there are some times I need that spiritual filter. When things begin to happen, I want words of wisdom. I've told you before how sometimes in my lifetime I have physically bit my bottom lip so I would not speak. I wasn't going to cuss anybody out, but I knew the words I would speak would not be wise. And I thought, okay, well, aren't you going to defend yourself? Hmm. Heaven and earth are going to pass away, but his word is going to remain forever. Jesus does not need anyone to defend his word. He needs people to live the word. And if we get that conduit right in our heart, instead of saying, I can't do it, and allow his spirit to work through us, then things will happen. 
to let him dwell in you. Over in 2 Corinthians, it says, for, for there be first a willing mind is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according that he hath not. God will not ask you anything that you cannot do with his power and grace. When Elijah asked the woman for a morsel, a cake to eat, she said, I can't do it. I, I, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake in the house. And she told the truth. But she had all the ingredients. If there be first a willing mind, you'd be surprised what you can do with the Spirit of God working through you. You may find this hard to believe, but in school, when it came time to give an oral book report, I took an automatic F. I was too bashful to stand in front of people and talk. You, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, and when you find that conduit, it's a different story. Now, you get out of the conduit, uh, then you begin to struggle. I had a state overseer come back to visit Pennsylvania, and I won't mention the man's name, it's immaterial. But he knew he was coming back to Pennsylvania, and he had just preached a message in Florida. And uh, God really, really anointed him. Came to Pennsylvania, and he thought, well, it worked in Florida, and I'm just going to preach it here. And at the end of the sermon, he stopped. He said, people, I'm sorry. This could not have been any drier if I had a mouthful of cotton. He said, it worked down there, and I didn't get my fresh anointing for this. See, it's okay to preach the same message, but you have to have a new anointing on it. You have to have an insight. You have to allow that spirit to work through you. And it doesn't always work the same way to every person, but if there be first a willing mind, that's, that's over half the battle. If you tell yourself that you're weak, then you won't try to do something that will cause you to be strong. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share something, Danny, if you don't mind. You told me in the parking lot. I told Tom already. I'm going to tell the world now. I saw Danny, and I shook his hand in the Progress parking lot and said, How you doing? He goes, Bud, I am sore. You know why? That man right there beside him took him to, is it Planet Fitness? And working them out on weights. And Tom's in his 70s, I believe. How old are you, Tom? About 73? Oh, 75. Danny, how old are you? 47. There was a gap there. But you know what happened? He's used to doing these things. In fact, he's taken his grandson, Danny's boy, and, and Daniel, if you knew him, he, he's starting to get built up. And that guy, of course, he used to be a Marine. That makes a difference, okay? But he's fit for his age. You know why? Because he puts his body to work. Tom laughed. He said, well, you know, I'm showing Danny he has muscles he didn't use for a while. I wonder how it is spiritually. Is there things that you used to do but you haven't done it for a long time. Oh, God hasn't moved. He hasn't changed. He's still the conduit. He, he will move you and bless. Have you ever won anyone to the Lord? How long has it been? Oh, his spirit still convicts. And to be that vessel, in, in uh, second, uh, or the same verse, uh, I have a little side note. Little is much when God is in it. 1 Peter 4, 10, 11 says, And every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. You don't have that ability. God, that's that conduit thing. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever Amen. The next slide, Michael, is going to be my last slide. I, I don't want to go to the last one. Brother Curtis, if you don't mind coming to the piano. Then Peter, Acts 3 and 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. 
This is the conduit part. You can't give somebody something that you have not experienced. Or you, you can talk to them. Uh, isn't amazing Dr. Spock, who writes all these baby books, never had children? Amazing. You know, there'll be people to tell you certain how, to, how to give the victory over something, and they have no idea. But Jesus was tempted in like manner in all things. He's my advocate. So when this beggar, looking upon them, that to receive something, the verse before this says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. Can you imagine? Here's the conduit. He reached down and picked him up. And the Bible says, and immediately, strength. Strength. And his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And the Bible says, and he, leaping up, stood. People thought, you know, if that guy ever has a chance to walk, can you imagine him trying to, no, the Bible says, and he, leaping up, stood. People we have prayed for to find a foundation, rock solid, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. And he walked and he entered with them into the temple. We pray for increase, but our increase may only come when we are a conduit to affect someone and they will follow you to the house of God. The woman at the well of Samaria brought almost the entire city back. Think of that. And she was not much to talk about in the sight of men. But she brought almost an entire... I want to tell you something. I want to give you something here today. I know a man named Jesus who will give you peace of mind. I know a man named Jesus that will save your soul. I know a man named Jesus that will answer your prayers. I want to be able to give that to someone today. But Peter physically touched somebody. And immediately, immediately the problem was solved. In my spirit, on the way to church this morning, I thought, I need to be here right now, where I am. And I said, oh, come on, Pat. You know, you know, I don't want to be, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I want to be a conduit. I'm foolish enough to believe right now this morning, if there's a person here and you have a need, allow me through the power of God to be a conduit. You have a need? You know what that need meant? Are there any takers you believe? It can be salvation, peace of mind. You, you're struggling with something and you say, I, I, I've never got the victory over it. He can do it. He can do it. Just one touch from the master. I'm not the master. He is. Is there a taker? I felt this because I believe God wants to touch somebody in a special way this morning. Wouldn't it be great for Jesus to come down and touch you? I mean, touch you and say, oh. Oh, he touched me. He touched me. Well, that conduit's here this morning. His spirit's moving. This is not a, I hope it works. He, he will do it. He will do it. But you need to step out by faith. And then you need to love him and keep his commandments. If you'll sing, brother, and any course you want, I'm going to remain here. I believe with all my heart, Sister Gal, I want to be a conduit. I'm not worried about you thinking, has that man lost his marbles? If you're here for the first time, God bless you. Thank you for being here. As every service like this, every service needs to be the will of God. This may never happen again. It may happen every time. But I do know one thing. Jesus is passing by. 
We need to reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Is there a person? You need something? I'm not going to stand here and hold your hand. Just touch my hand and go and pray and let God be the conduit. God bless you, Patty. God bless you. Are there others? This is a reality. Right where you are, God can touch you. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, Tom. Love you, Tom. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, have thine own way. Have thine own way. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus.